for taking time out of your day to learn more about the flex lending program offered by OHCS. And on, on our first slide here, we've got our address and our website. So maybe jot that down. Um, a quick introduction of your Flex Lending team. My name is Christina Hatton, and I'm the Flex Lending Business Development Field Rep. I will be your liaison for program questions and training. Also joining us today from the Flex Lending team is Angelica Jimenez, our Homeownership Loan Specialist. She is available for program questions as well. Uh, Scott Shaw is our Assistant Director of Homeownership Lending, who he is unable to join us today. And let's see, also listed again is our Flex Lending website and our Flex Lending email. The HCS underscore homeownership lending at hcs.org and .gov, that email goes to all of us. So we do highly recommend if you have a question or need help on anything, please use that and all of us are available to answer your questions. Our partners for the Flex Lending Program are Idaho Housing and Finance Association, who's our master servicer, and Hilltop Securities, who is our program administrator. On our call today from Hilltop Securities is Sharon Gonzalez, Lori Wood, and Nixon Dejas, and they will be completing the second half of the training for the lender portal. Um, here are some housekeeping items before we get started. Uh, again, this training is being recorded and transcribed. Please remain muted to avoid background noise. Submit any questions via the chat and questions will be answered at the end of each section. A PDF copy of the training will be sent to you along with a link for a quiz and you must pass the quiz in order to obtain lender portal credentials. All right, let's get started. So what is the Flex Lending Program? OHCS has developed a lending program to help fulfill OHCS's mission of providing homeownership opportunities for low to moderate income Oregonians. Flex lending is paired with a down payment assist with down payment and closing cost assistance to help Oregonians buy homes. Flex lending provides a fixed rate first mortgage in combination with a silent or repayable second. And the biggest issue facing borrowers today is saving for a down payment and the flex lending program is here to help. The Flex Lending Program is a 30-year fixed mortgage loan product with a DPA. The DPA that is offered is as a silent or repayable second mortgage with 10, 20, or 30-year terms, and there is a 4 or 5% DPA option available. Um, these loans are under the conventional FHA, VA, and USDA loan products. These, this product may be combined with other grants and DPAs, although it cannot be combined with the Oregon Bond Program. Reduced MI for lower income borrowers. So if your borrower is less than 80% AMI, they will have a reduced MI coverage. Program features, these are competitive loans with down payment assistance, no first time home buyer requirements, Exclusive to properties located in Oregon, applicant income is used to qualify and not the total household income. Focused demographics DPA product provides increased DPA and more favorable terms. The DPA provides a repayable or silent second lien based on the total first mortgage loan amount. Any unused DPA funds are applied to the principal balance of the first mortgage loan. Lender funds the DPA at closing and is reimbursed when IHFA purchases the loan. Note the DPA may not be used to pay the difference between the sales price and appraised value if the sales price is higher, which is known as gap financing. Interest rates are based on current market conditions. The rates do change daily and are available 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. You can access the rates on the lender portal and also on our Flex Lending website. 
Flex funding, the first eligible first mortgages. All first mortgages are 30 year fixed rates. We offer FHA, VA, USDA, Freddie Mac under the HFA Advantage program and Fannie Mae under the HFA Preferred program. The CLTV includes the combination of other repayable gifts, grants, community, affordable seconds, IDAs, and employer assisted benefits. Please refer to Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac for the community affordable seconds requirements. The Focus Demographic DPA product is designed to bridge the gap for underserved communities by providing an increased DPA and more favorable terms. In order to qualify, the borrower must meet our program guidelines and meet two of these four criteria. A household size of four or more people, household member with a disability, front end DTI of 28% or higher, sole head of household with one or more eligible dependents and the eligible dependents are as follows less than 18 years of age age 62 or older a household member with a disability and note that household must include only one adult who is not an eligible dependent Here is our uh, focus demographics product eligibility worksheet. This determines the, whether the borrowers qualify. The worksheet will need to be completed and signed by both the borrowers and the loan officer. And this form can be found on our website as well as the lender portal. The Flex Lending Program offers two different types of second mortgages. The first is a silent second mortgage that bears a 0% interest rate. And we've got the 10 year option and that loan will be reduced after the fifth year each year on the anniversary of the note date by an amount equal to 20% of the original principal balance amount and fully forgivable at the end of year 10. And the 20 year option, the loan will be reduced after the fifth year each year on the anniversary of the note date by an amount equal to six and two thirds of the original original principal amount and fully forgivable at the end of year 20. The uh, there's the repayment terms is an amortizing second mortgage repayable bears an interest rate of 1% above the first lien interest rate as set by the program. It is offered on a term of 10, 20 or 30 years. It's payable monthly beginning the first full month after closing. Um, the second mortgage lien will become due and payable when the following events occur. Sale or transfer of the property, refinance or payoff, rental of property if the borrower rents or leases the property, failure to occupy property as principal residence, and default or acceleration. Borrower eligibility, the maximum income is $125,000. First time home buyer, not required. Borrower must occupy the property within 60 days of closing. Borrower may not own any other property at the time of closing. And non occupying co borrowers and co signers are allowed as long as they're within income limits. Income requirements again, 125,000 is the income limit. DPA terms are based on the borrower's income. The income used is the income that's determined by the underwriter. Lenders are responsible for ensuring income meets program requirements. Here is the second mortgage loan matrix, which breaks down the DPA percentage, the income tier, the terms, and the rate. Silent mortgages are for borrowers that have an AMI of 80% and below. Repayable mortgages are for borrowers whose AMI is greater than 80%, up to 125,000. The standard DPA has a 4% DPA option, and the focus demographics DPA has a 5% DPA. Please note the focus demographics is capped at 120% AMI. 
And that can defer can be different based on your county. So watch out for that piece. Um, here are the income limits by county. They are divided up by incomes less than 80% AMI, incomes 80% to 120% AMI, and incomes greater than 120% AMI with a cap of 125,000. This chart is also posted on the Flex Lending webpage. Property eligibility, new or existing one unit single family homes, PUDs, condominiums, townhomes, manufactured homes, properties not allowed or co-ops, second home and investment properties, two to four unit properties and single wide manufactured homes. Underwriting requirements, all mortgage loans must be underwritten to the standards of the applicable loan type. 620 minimum credit score using DU, LPA, and GUS. 640 minimum credit score for manual underwrites on government loans with two months reserves. Manual underwriting is not allowed on conventional loans. The maximum DTI is 50%. This is for owner-occupied purchases only. And lenders are responsible for credit underwriting decisions and follow standard agency guidelines and any IHFA overlays. Uh, mortgage insurance, uh, we allow for borrower paid monthly with annual renewal, split premium, single premium, and finance mortgage insurance is allowed. However, there is a gross LTV cap of 97%, which includes the finance mortgage insurance amount, and lender paid mortgage insurance option is not allowed. And please note again that under 80% AMI, a reduced coverage amount is offered. Our approved MI companies are Arch, MGIC, Essent, Radian, National MI, and Annette. Homebuyer education requirements. Homebuyer education is required for all first-time homebuyers. Homebuyers must complete homebuyer education through an OHCS homeownership center, and there's a list of the homeownership centers at this website. Program fees, origination charges are allowed according to agency guidelines. The fees may be passed on to the borrower as allowed by origin agency guidelines. All fees should be disclosed on the loan estimate CD. And if you'll notice the chart off to the right hand side there, there are um, a loan acquisition fee, a tax service fee, and a flood cert. Those are fees that are paid to Idaho Housing and they will be deducted from the mortgage loan purchase price. And then there's also a code compliance, which is payable to Hilltop Securities. And they have an option called the Hilltop Pay ACH application, which you will learn more about when uh, Sharon takes over on the second half of the training. And then list all fees in accordance with TRID guidelines on the LECD document. Lender requirements. Lenders, loan officers must be licensed and approved to originate loans in Oregon. Staff originating and processing mortgages under the program must be located in Oregon or within 50 miles of Oregon's borders. Lenders must have the ability to originate, fund, and service mortgage loans, including the DPA loans, until they are purchased by the master servicer. And here's your uh, contact information for the Flex Lending team again. My name is Christina Hatton, and on behalf of the Flex Lending team, myself, Angelica Jimenez, and Scott Shaw, we look forward to working with you and helping our underserved communities of Oregon obtain homeownership. And thank you all for joining us today, and we can take some time for a few questions. We don't have any. Uh, oh, it looks like one just popped in. Um, let's see here. With rates hopefully on the way back down in this in the soon to be future, have they considered allowing clients to be able to take advantage of lowering their payments and subordinating the second? Example, some programs allow it if the client is not increasing the first mortgage balance. 
Also, is there a prepayment penalty exceptions if they are refinancing? Um, so I, I, if I understand the question correctly, we're asking about subordinating the second. The program was not designed or written. Um, the first and the second mortgage are combined together um, as a package. So um, it says some programs allow it if the client is not increasing the first mortgage balance. Our program has not been set up that way. So at this point, no, that's not something we can do. And there are no prepayment penalties um, if they are refinancing. And then is there a prepayment penalty if they're refinancing? Sorry, did you say that? Yeah, no, there's not. Okay. Um, she's, uh, Sylvia says, I want to confirm the percent DPA is based on the total loan amount. Is the DPA amount rounded either up or down to the nearest dollar or is the exact amount provided? So uh, the DPA is based on the total loan amount. The DPA is rounded up and rounded down depending on where the cents are. And Sharon actually goes over that in her portion of the training. So that will um, that will be on the next few slides. The correct the answer for that. And can the borrower receive back at closing any verified paid earnest money deposit or fees paid by borrower if applicable? Yes, they can. And I think we had someone with their hand raised to you. Nelson, would you like to go ahead and ask a question? Is he on mute? Can we unmute him? Uh, it looks like his hand is down now. Okay, well, we can go ahead. I'm gonna stop sharing and give it over to Sharon and she can complete the second half for this training. OK, thank you, Christina. Let me get myself set up here. And I'm going to share. And how's that for everybody? Looks good. And you can hear me OK. All right, yep. well, great. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Christina. I appreciate you taking this time to to train our lenders on all of the great programs offered by your organization. And I'm very thankful to be part of the team with the opportunity to share about the lender portal and how they can uh, utilize these programs. So we're going to be going over what the lender portal is. We're going to show how to access and maneuver through the portal, making loan reservations, uploading and submitting documents for review, checking the pipeline loan status for any conditions or approvals. So the lender online provides a web based application for online reservations and document management. All documents for review are uploaded and electronically submitted through the lender portal, and it's going to be available for you to do these things 24 seven to accommodate most of your tasks. During the, the 24 seven period, you could submit documents for review. You could check the status of your pipeline. You can upload. Um, you could uh, print confirmations, obtain the program guidelines. If you're working with customers on the weekend or in the evenings and you need to know maybe what the income limits are, you could actually log in to the portal and you could pull down the program summaries. We would have all that valuable information that you need to discuss with your clients. Making the reservation of funds is only going to be available though Monday through Friday, 9 to 4 Pacific. So on the weekends and any uh, certain financial holidays during the week, it will be closed for new reservations. The portal can be found at the URL listed here on your screen. Each organization has access administrators within your organization that will be responsible for creating and managing user accounts as there's seven different levels. So if you don't know who your administrator is for your organization, please call or email us and we'll show that contact information a couple of times here in the, at the end of the presentation. Once you do gain access, though, I just kind of want to show you what you'll see when you get in there. At the top of the page, you're going to see these labels across here, and they house information listed in these um, charts. So if you click on bulletin boards, this will open up and you'll be able to see the uh, posted interest rates for that particular day, current income limits and, uh, you know, other 
resources that we might post in here from time to time. If you click on program documents, here you're going to find the, the entire manual with all the all the nuts and bolts. But of uh, interest would be the government and the conventional program summaries. Those are going to have just, you know, it's kind of the cliff note version of the program manual with all the good stuff, like what are the income limits, the general guidelines, general way that it works, FICOs and things like that. And then you see my little note here at the bottom that we will have this um, training in its entirety, entirety, the one that Christina did and the lender portal section on a uh, online recorded uh, version available coming soon. And Christina will keep you in the loop on that. I would suggest, though, um, if you are interested in the rates if you deal with this you know you're if you're LOs talking to your customers obviously you're going to want to know what the rates are you should subscribe to get the daily rates first thing in the morning as soon as uh, Christine and her team send the posted rates over for that day we will put you send out the uh, information with those rates so if you click on this link here you put in your name and your email you will automatically be added to that list and it's really a good idea to get on there because every once in a while we have intraday rates that means that the markets have changed um, and so we send out a new updated rate sheet should they change so you probably would be interested in knowing that as well Next, we'll discuss the tabs in the system. Under the labels are the different tab functions. The DPA program options will be found in the new reservation tab. The loan status tab, that's where you're going to go after you've made your reservation to pull and submit documents. The reports tab has several different simple reports to help keep you abreast of your pipeline, and we'll discuss those in just a few slides. And then user accounts is where you would go to um, change your password or maybe modify any of your information. There is a 60 day timeline from reservation to Idaho housing purchase, and this timeline is managed entirely by the lender. But we do have some suggested flexible timelines shown on the screen that will accommodate for the package submission and review by Hilltop while allowing plenty of time on the back end after closing to submit the credit file to IHFA for purchase. Um, th these are just some of the timings that some of our lenders uh, like to navigate to. So, you know, some version 10, 15 days before closing. That way it gives you a, all your additional time on the back end to get that file through to you uh, to um, Idaho Housing. And just a little reminder that, you know, you don't want to reserve too soon because you could waste a lot of that valuable time and it could cause you to pay some unnecessary extension fees if it doesn't get purchased in time. And then, the last little rule about this is before you can actually make that reservation in the portal, you do have to have a loan application with an address and an executed sales contract. When you are ready to lock the rate and reserve funds for your borrower, you're going to click on that new reservation tab and you'll see the entire list of all the programs. I know it's pretty daunting, but I think once you get in here and you get familiar with it, you're going to already know what you're going for. So you're going to be looking for, say, Fannie 4% DPA is what your borrower is uh, going to use. And then you look at the different program options. You've got the 10 year repayable, 20 year repayable, or the 20 year silent at 80% and below. The next piece of information is going to be the income limit. And then the rate that was set that day is going to be over here. If you happen to once again need to look up some facts about the program that you're about to uh, reserve in to make sure that it's the right one, if you click on program summary, it will bring up that applicable program summary for the product that you're about to utilize. And you can get the information right there on your screen. And one little note as well, because of the uh, somebody mentioned the markets being all wonky, and yes, they have been for quite a while. So there is the possibility that um, Oregon may not be able to price every option that you see on your screen every day. So if you come in one day and these three have been available and all of a sudden one of them is gone, chances are it just wasn't available. So just a little little uh, word of caution there. Once you've chosen the product, you're going to see this loan demographic screen. There are required fields and they're all marked with the red star and there's probably about 40 of them. If you want to tab through and put in the information, it's probably going to take you about 90 seconds because a lot of it is in a drop down and you just choose it. But if you would rather import it, you can uh, import it by clicking on this button up here and it will import the, the most current Fannie 3.2 or, or whatever version they are using and it will complete 
most of your forms. I'm not going to say it would complete every required form, so you would have to check it, but it would get a lot of them in there for you. And then in the form, I wanted before you get started on your very first one for the first time, I wanted you to point out a couple of things to help troubleshoot so that you don't run into problems. So if this is your first time to get in the reservation page and you open up the demographic screen, scroll down to the bottom and make sure that you have some people listed here in the loan officer drop down and the contact person drop down. This is crucial to submitting a reservation. If you don't have anything, anybody in here, it will not let you submit and you'd have to redo your reservation. This is a setup done by the access administrator when they're creating the credentials. So just make sure that you have something here. If you have any questions about it, give us a call or your access administrator and we can certainly talk you through that. The other piece I wanted to show you was the income. This can be a little bit uh, tricky too, um, and it can be devastating if you don't do it correctly for your borrower. So you've got options of choosing annual or monthly and you need to put in the appropriate amount. If you're going to do annual, obviously they've put in the right amount, 80,000. This is going to validate against our system to make sure your borrower is under the income limits for the program that you've chosen and the address. If you put in monthly, if you clicked monthly and kept 80,000, it's not going to validate correctly and vice versa. If you put annual and you put a monthly amount, it's not going to you know, it's not going to validate correctly. So just make sure that you're matching up the dollar amount in here, whether it's an monthly or annual or monthly amount. And then when you get finished um, with the reservation, putting all the information, you're going to click the submit button. Now, once you've submitted it, if you're not receiving the reservation confirmation, you're receiving some sort of error message, and it could be just as simple as missing the zip code or any other required field marked with the star. So just go back to that field, make your revisions, and then submit. But this message here is telling you what I was just talking about. You've entered $100,000 for that borrower, and the system is telling you that they exceed the uh, limit for this particular program at that address. So go back and check your wages. Uh, make sure you didn't uh, make a typo, but if the, if you did, just make your change in here and then submit, and you should be fine. But if this is actually in this example, your borrower makes $100,000 for the pro program and address you've chosen, they're not going to qualify. So that's a good, bad thing. You know right up front that they're not going to meet the guidelines of the program, so you've got plenty of time to possibly go find some other assistance for your borrowers, but hopefully everybody's going to make it through this just fine. Once you do all of that, once you do have all the required fields and, and you've submitted it, if it likes everything, you're going to get this confirmation here. You can reprint it at any time. So in addition to the loan demographic information, it's going to pull over that you entered. It's also going to show you the loan tracking number. This is the number our system assigns, the date and time it was accepted. 60 days from that date is the commitment expiration date. This is the date that needs to be purchased by Idaho Housing. And then, of course, it's going to show your first lien rate and your second lien rate and just all the other information that you've entered in here. After reservation, any cancellation or changes to the loan must be done by the program administrator. These are just some of the common change requests listed on the screen that we see. We, you know, loan amounts seem like they're always changing. We can change all of these things for you, even a program change. If you decided your borrower is going from, you know, government to Fannie or vice versa, send us the information. What you want to do, we'll look into the system, make sure that the bar is meeting those particular guidelines and we, so we can move um, programs for you. As far as a new reservation for the same borrower, that's going to be prohibited for 60 days if we cancel it, unless we've had a chat about what's going on with your borrower. There have been a number of times when borrowers have had to walk away from the properties for reasons that were out of their control, such as excessive seller repairs uh, that they weren't willing to make, some you know long drawn out title issues. There's a host of things where it's not the borrower's fault that they've had to walk away from the property. So we don't want to penalize them. Give us a call. Let's see what the current reservation is at time wise, you know, how much time is left on that uh, commitment. If it looks like it's going to be pretty quick that they're already looking and maybe going to have a contract soon, even if it's going to be a little past 60 days, it might be worth it to keep 
that reservation with that product with that rate that was set and just pay a small extension fee. But if it looks like it's going to be more long and drawn out, we are going to note the file of the issue. And then if your borrower does happen to recontract before 60 days, give us a call and in all likelihood we should be able to go ahead and allow you to, to relock for your borrower so they can utilize the great programs that they have here at Oregon Housing. After you do make the reservation, the next tab that you're going to be using throughout the rest of the process is the loan status tab. Here in this tab, the first thing you'd want to do is search for your borrower. So just put in their name and it's going to pull it up right here. And also it gives you just a tad bit of information that's helpful to you. If you look over here on the right, it's showing you the stage that it's in. It's just reserved right now. These are the action icons that you will be using and found to the left of each borrower's name. The view icon is where you're going to go to check the loan status for conditions and approvals. Reprint, we went over that a little bit. If we have to make any changes to the loan at your request, you're going to want to reprint that confirmation and you would go do it by clicking here. PDF docs is where you're going to go to get the populated documents such as the checklist and your second lien documents. And then eDocs is where you're going to go to submit your documents and for review. And this is what actually puts them on our task list for review. After reservation and at least three to five days before closing, uh, maybe sooner if you like, the next step is to generate the checklist of items needed for the pre-closing package review. So again, you're going to search for your borrower when you pull them up. Click on PDF Docs. Here you can see the option to generate th these uh, documents here, the checklist, you've got your borrower's acknowledgement, you've got your dot and your note, and there may be some other ones, this, um, but this is just showing you an example. You would just click the boxes and generate the documents. Now, when you have been, when the pre-closing package has been approved and you go back in and click PDF docs, then you're going to see your commitment letter, the legally enforceable obligation letter, you know, the, the post closing checklist. So you'll get your other documents once it's been approved. So generate your documents. And before we get into that, I just kind of want to show you a list of what is on the checklist for government and conventional. Pretty much the same as you can see, I'm identical uh, for the most part. We need executed underwriter cert, either the 92900LT or the 1008. And in lieu of having an additional certified underwriters, you know, certification form, we are asking the underwriter to sign either wet sign or DocuSign or that, you know, electronic uh, verifiable signature, whatever underwriter search you're using. And that just gives us kind of a warm fuzzy that you've taken a look at it or they've taken a look at it and it, the information is current. We realize this is not the final, but it is as, as accurate as it can be at this time. We realize that uh, we're also going to need the applicable AUS findings, your URLAs. We need the contract and addendums, but we don't need all the 150 pages in between. The uh, home buyer education cert, again, that is going to be only required for first time home buyers. We need the second lien LE if applicable, and of course, the completed DOT note and the bars acknowledgement form. This is so before we, you know, uh, Go any further, I just thought it would be helpful to show you the documents that are going to be over there uh, in there for you. And this is a pre-closing checklist. This information here is what's pulling over from your reservation. So this is the time when you want to take your 1003 and you want to make sure that what you're about to submit matches what is on here. So oftentimes, oftentimes, you know, the files change hands and somebody made some changes and maybe who's uploading wasn't aware of that. So just take a quick glance and make sure that your loan amount is still 286,150. Make sure that you're still doing 4%. Um, they're still in this program. Uh, the, the, the rates are what is posted here. If anything is different, let us know what's changed. We'll change it in the system and then you can redraw your documents so everything is accurate and everybody's on the same page. On the borrower's acknowledgement form, everything here will auto populate except for the two highlighted dates and the lender will need to complete these as well as the borrower's signature. The legally enforceable obligation letter will be completed by the system after pre-compliance approval and only require the borrower's signature at closing. And this form is just acknowledging that the borrower is receiving these funds from a qualified housing agency. 
The commitment letter will also be completed by the system after pre-compliance approval. So if you're ready to close and you don't see either of these documents or the post-closing checklist in the PDF docs icon, please give us a call because that means the file has not yet been approved. And this example is of the subordinate notes. You can see in the green boxes here that it's pulling over the information from the system and that you would complete the, the highlighted information here. So once again, if you're printing your documents and you know this doesn't look right, just give us a call so we can make the appropriate changes. And here's an example of the subordinate deed of trust to be completed in the same manner. So we've tried to complete as much as we can for you, but there are going to be those few fields that you know we don't have the information on. So you will have you will be able to type those in on your computer. Now that we're ready to take a look at submitting the documents, these next screens are going to demonstrate the upload function and submission of the documents listed on the checklist that we just discussed. So when you're ready to do this, once again, you always start in the loan status tab and you find your find your borrower, and now you're going to click on eDocs. Just move to the next icon. Now you see the com uh, compliance package buckets, and there are two. We've got a pre-closing, a post-closing, and they both work identically as far as uploads and submissions. You're going to click on Add New. It'll bring up the screen, and it, you're going to uh, click the Click Here button in red. When you do that, it's going to bring the screen at your bottom, and it's just telling you to go browse your computer and find the documents you'd like to upload. You can upload them individually if you'd like to, or you could upload a complete file. It's up to, you know, a scan file. It's up to you, but you, you do have to name them from the drop down list, and there's an option for each document. If you have comments that you think would be helpful to the file reviewer, please, please put those in here because when she pulls up the file for review, she's going to see the comments. Um, she or he, should I say? And this is telling us that uh, they're going to be uploading the final 92900 LT this afternoon. So that's probably pretty important. We're probably waiting for that so that we can approve it because they're probably waiting to get that approval so the underwriter can do their clear to close. So, you know, we work in pretty close tandem. So any comments that you could give us would be very helpful. And so just to recap, you've added comments, you've uploaded and sub and saved documents for review in the system, and that's indicated by the date over here. So now you know that the documents are in the system, but what hasn't happened is we've not been notified. What you need to do next is a very important step after you've got your documents is click that submit button. And when you do, it's going to populate a date and a timestamp there. Without that, that just means you know that your documents are there, but we haven't been notified. As soon as as soon as you click submit, this is what you're going to see telling you that we've been notified and here's your date and timestamp. So this is what this is your warm fuzzy on your end. And this is what we get on our end, just so you know what happens once you submit, whether you're submitting a, a complete package, a condition or whatever. Every time you submit, we get this notification and we can tell from this tiny bit of information if it's coming from Oregon, Oklahoma, Ohio and you know who the borrower is and what stage they're in. So if you told us on that Dolly Dillon, got to get that CD out the door today. We're waiting on the the the, the underwriter cert. When when we get that next notification, we'll know that's probably what we want. So we can kind of jump in there, get that cleared for you, so that you can get on with your business uh, and get that those documents out the door. Our general turn times 24 hours, usually less for pre closing, and then post closing is generally within 48 hours. And now that you've submitted your package or conditions and allowed a little time, you need to know the status of the file. So once again, pull up your borrower and you can get that quick glimpse. You can see the status has changed from reserve to pre-closed review, but it's incomplete. So to get more details about that, you need to click on the view icon right over here, and then it's going to pull up all the loan demographic information. But down at the bottom of the page, if you'll scroll down there, you'll see Oops, the stage status and and you know what's going on. So it's reserved. The package was uploaded. It was reviewed the same day and incomplete. Look over here to the left. There it is again. We're missing that uh, underwriter cert. 
so there's you know there's different ways to find that same information but this is telling you what we need so you need to get that uploaded submitted the same way that you did before and then give us a couple of hours two or three hours after you've submitted conditions for us to circle back through the day's new files and get to conditions and get those cleared for you and as you can see my little note here that currently the system does not automatically email you when we have performed a function, a review on your files, but that is in the process. So hopefully in the near future, we will have that ability, but I think you'll find, you know, following our timeline and getting into check status is, is really very seamless and uh, an easy process to follow. So once you do go back in after you've submitted documents or conditions, you want to see the status. Well, looky here, it's been approved and it's been committed on the 10th. So at this point, when you go into PDF docs, now you're going to get your commitment letter for your records. That's just telling you that it's met the preliminary guidelines for the program, assuming you know nothing has changed after closing. You get the post-closing compliance checklist. You get the acknowledgement letter. You know all the other documents that we talked about are now going to be every document will be available to you, and you are ready to um, get your documents off to uh, closing. And just a little reminder that, and we still get this question sometimes. People are sitting there at the, wait, the table waiting for the money to be funded. It's not coming from Oregon Housing. The lender actually is going to fund the loan at closing, the, the assistance, and then they will get reimbursed when Idaho Housing purchases the loan. And these are the post-closing documents that we need in our second package, basically just executed versions of the, the original documents that you entered, like the, the final CD, the URLAs, you know, our final executed acknowledgement forms and the note and deed. You're going to want to get those into the portal the way I showed you um, within 10 days or so. And then, of course, you're going to want to get your credit file off to Idaho Housing so they can get it in line for review as well. And that was it from start to finish. You know where everything is now. We went through the loan process, how to find your documents, upload them, submit them, and how to find your conditions and approvals. Now I just want to show you a quick report on how you can um, monitor your pipeline, and that's going to help promote timely purchases and avoid those un unintentional extension fees because you know somebody wasn't paying attention and it's gone past 60 days. So now you're going to use the reports tab. And it's going to pull this up, and the one that I'm going to show you is a commitment expiration report. You know, there's other reports, but this one I think is more comprehensive. You could get very specific with what you're looking for. Maybe if you're a loan officer or, or a processor, you might just be working on one particular officer's files that day. So, uh, you know, whatever information you want, always be sure to include, click the include uh, and complete documents. Then run your report. And it's going to show you what you have access to see based on your access level. Um, a clerk wouldn't be able to see any of this. A loan officer would be able to see just their loans. A lender or different uh, level would be able to see everybody's loans. So, um, but this is showing you what you have access to see, and it's pretty comprehensive. It shows you your borrower, your loan amount, and the all important commitment expiration date right here. This is the one that you need to be watching. Remember, this is not your closing date. This is the date that it needs to be purchased, so that's the one you need to watch. It shows your conditions that, that we have on there, and it, the, it also ties in everything by showing you the last stage and status, so you can get a complete picture here on what's going on with your file. If you see that your file is going to go past the 60 days from being purchased, there are four different options, 7, 15, 22, and 30. The prices that you see here on the screen will be netted out at loan purchase by Idaho Housing. I think you saw in the PDF docs icon, there was an, an option for an extension request form, so you would want to generate that. It's going to pull over all the information about the borrower. You just need to choose the option, sign it, and email it to us here at this email on your screen. We'll get those changes made in the system. We're going to sign that form, send it back to you. We will also upload the, ex the uh, extended form into the portal, so you'd be able to have that for your records as well. We can only do a one-time extension um, before closing. But if you do still happen to go past that, uh, we've had questions before thinking people are thinking that if it's already been extended, that's it, and that the servicer won't purchase them. And that is not true. As long as you get all of your documents required by Idaho Housing, even if it's another 60 days or you know 70 days, as long as you they get all the requirements, they will um, 
assess another extension fee. We just won't be able to know what that's going to be on the back end. Just a little timeline summary about uh, how it works here with getting your funds reserved and not too soon, getting the two different packages in here. And this is information on Hilltop Pay. Christine mentioned this earlier when she was talking about the fees that would be netted out by Idaho Housing, but all of the Hilltop Securities compliance review fees of 225 must be sent via this Hilltop Pay application. And it's the only method allowed for a number of reasons, but the 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 biggest reason is it um, it's a faster compliance approval for loan purchase. That's the biggest thing. Uh, we want to get these files through the process and approved as quick as we can. Um, so please make sure that in your closing instructions to title, you ask them not to send this fee to us as they do oftentimes because somebody at your shop is going to be uh, sending this through Hilltop Pay. Here's our contact information. Christina provided you hers, but I've just added it in here just one more time. I've got the Idaho housing information. If you have any kind of questions about their their guidelines or anything, they would be the best resource to get the, you know, the right information. And then, of course, anything about the, the portal, your credentials, the files, anything like that, training, you can always come to us here at Hilltop. And I have one last slide, Christina. You, Christina also mentioned that there would be a short quiz required in order to receive credentials to the lender portal. Within 24 hours of this training, everybody that logged into this training session will receive an email with that link to the post training quiz in order to receive your training certificate of completion. You do have to have a score of 80%. The certificate will be able to be downloaded at the moment at the time of your training session, and it will also be emailed to you. So if you're an access administrator, you're going to want to send your certificate to Oregon Flex Lending Help at Hilltop Securities. Tell them you're an access administrator so that so that you can get activated into the program. And this is assuming that you've well, if you're taking the training, you're already approved with um, uh, Oregon. We're assuming that you're also approved with Idaho, but you'd have to be able to have both of those approvals. And then um, Nick and his team will get you activated to the portal. If you are just a portal user, you would want to send the same certificate to your access administrator so they can set up your credentials. If you don't know who your access administrator is, again, reach out to us and we will provide that information for you. So that's it for me. I Thank you, everybody, for your time. Thank you, Christina, for letting me share in this great product. And um, I think it's time for questions now, if you have any. Thank you, Sharon. You're welcome. So we've had quite a few questions come in, and I think um, Christina was able to answer a lot of them, but I think we'll just read them out loud for those that aren't following in the chat. One question here says, to clarify, do borrowers need to meet all four of the demographic requirements or one or two of them? The answer is they need to meet two of the listed demographic requirements. Is the training also going to cover rate advantage and cash advantage? And the answer is the rate advantage and cash advantage are for the Oregon bond program. That program is different from the flex lending program. Um, flex lending and rate advantage and cash advantage Oregon bond programs cannot be combined. This training is only for the flex lending program. Next question, how long are you able to extend beyond the 60 days? And Christina, was that a question for Sharon? That's for Sharon. Before we do that, I want to kind of address a little bit on the because I had an email from Don about the Oregon bond program. Um, the rate advantage and cash advantage are Oregon bond programs. When um, the lender sent in their applications, they um, were also approved for the Oregon bond program. However, the Oregon bond program is not accepting new lenders at this time. When they are accepting new lenders, you can, if you're not already on their approved list, you can um, get on their approved list or you're approved to do them. Unfortunately, they, it's, I don't even know how to say this. I'm sorry. It's just <laughs> kind of convoluted, but they're um, the, the lender application all lenders did was for the flex lending program 
and for Oregon bond, but Oregon bond is not accepting new lenders at this time. So when they do open it up, then you can start doing uh, the Oregon bond and get on their list. But for right now, there's only a few that are lenders that are approved, and those are the only ones who are OK to do um, the Oregon bond program at this time. And then the next question, sorry, Sharon, how long are you able to extend beyond the 60 days? Well, again, um, as long as you're getting the documents there, I'm sure there probably is. They probably have a limit if they haven't purchased a loan, if Idaho hasn't purchased a loan. And for some reason, I'm thinking I read somewhere six months. Then they may it may. Surely it's not going to take that long, so uh, you know, I really don't have a concrete answer, but I just know that we can only do an extension. Before closing for 30 days, but they will do additional extensions. From Idaho housing before when they purchase it. I just don't know how much additional time they're going to assess. I think it is 30 days for them as well, but okay. we can we can look at that a little bit. Hopefully we don't need to go beyond. I'm not sure, you know, extending beyond the 60 days, um, an extra 30 days we would think would be good enough, but um, needing more time than that, I'm not I guess we would really want to be involved in that mm -hmm, and see mm -hmm. what is um, holding it up. So. Right. Uh, will there be a separate training for rate and cash advantage programs? No, that, that again, um, since Oregon bond is not accepting new lenders, there is no training at this point at this time. And then Christina did share the information for Oregon bond. So any questions there separate from the flex program? So you'll want to refer um, any questions to them and um, the bond team can help you with that. Is everything pre printed on the second lien documents or will we need to fill it out? Also, will we need a CD for the second as well? Let me see if I can get back to the docs. It's pre-printed as much as we can. There's the deed of trust. You know, the things in green here, these are in the system. These are hard coded. We already know all this information, but um, you know, your MIN number, your type of organization, state, trustee, things like that, you're gonna have to fill those in, but they are um, active fields. So when you pull the document up on your screen, you can type that information into these fields and then save it. So it's just pre-printed as much as we can. Okay. And then will they need a CD for the second as well? Oh, for, let me see, Christina, for the, um, yes. The, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. It, it is, you know, the TRID and all of the disclosures are, uh, uh, Put on, the responsibilities put on the lender to um, follow their their internal guidance on that. With the exception, I think the silent does not correct. Does not require it. Yes. Nick, ju jump that, in anytime. That, yeah, yeah. No, no, that is that is correct. So only on the amortized uh, second liens, so we're going to require obviously an, a loan estimate for the second lien, which carries over to the closing disclosure for the second lien as well. But for the silent seconds. Uh, we don't require a loan estimate or a closing disclosure. Thank you. You need all the compliance docs three days before the closing? At least. I mean, you can send them before that. Uh, probably a little sooner than that until you get familiar with it because the burden's going to be more on you. Should we have conditions? Once you once you understand and get us clean files, then yeah, three to five days is is Born plenty because it, you're not going to be waiting on us. How do we request a rush review? Nick, go ahead. Uh, you can you can upload the documents and then reach out to the Oregon Flex Lending uh, email address and uh, requesting that rush, and we'll go ahead and, and get right on it. Put it added to the top of the queue. 
so do we not get notification that the review is completed by the reviewer? Not at this time. It's in the uh, it's on our wish list and they are uh, working on some new software versions where we should have that. But for now, you just have to submit your file. Give us 24 hours uh, maximum, really. If you were to submit something this morning, I would say in all likelihood you could probably go back mid to late afternoon or Nick can stop me if I'm wrong. As, as it stands right now, mid to late afternoon, they should be able to see some sort of status, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So it's a uh, it's a relatively it's it is a new program. So um, you know it start, the files are starting to trickle in. So yeah, definitely give us 24 hours um, to check the status on of Lender Online. And if yeah, if it goes beyond that 24 hour period, just reach out to us and we'll give you a status update in regards to when the file is going to be reviewed. Thank you. What are the 10 most common errors from your current lenders? Since it is a new program, we only <laughs> had one, one, one file. We don't have uh, we don't have any loans, but I can tell you this. Just make sure that your total first lien loan amount uh, on on the res on the on the DPA documents matches what's on your system, because obviously the second lien DPA amount you know, is calculated off that total. So any changes that are needed, just go ahead and reach out to us to the Home Plus inbox. I mean the Home Plus, uh, the Flex Lending inbox, and we'll go ahead and make those changes and allow you to redraw the documents with the updated changes. So just make sure everything's consistent on your system to what's on our our documents and uh, and 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 everything is completed. And one that I can tell you with our first loan that we've have uploaded is when you're filling out your advanced demographic report for the focus demographic um, program, make sure that you complete the PNI information and the calculation if you're selecting a 28% DTI and over. So, or, or yeah, ratio front end ratio or over. Um, that, that was one that was missed and it was constantly missed with the lender that we had. Um, I guess they were just overlooking it. So just make sure that's that's complete. Is a home inspection mandatory? No, we don't have requirements for a home inspection. That's up to the borrower if they want to get one, and we don't need to review that. Is there any light on the horizon for the DPA advantage or rate advantage to be opened up to us? You will uh, need to contact the um, Oregon Bond Program um, and their email is listed up on this uh, chat, so you will need to talk to them about what their timeline is. Nations will require a CD for the second loan on both the repayable and forgivable silent second. Yeah, and that's, again, that's where each lender is responsible for their own. So if you guys, if um, Nations Lending requires it, then yes. And we, then Deborah um, wants to know if they can personalize our brochures and flyers with their right. own, is that acceptable? Yeah, that is acceptable. You do need to email them to us for review. We do, since we are a state agency, we do require um, review of it. If you're going to put our name on it, Oregon Housing and Community Services, um, just send the flyer once you get it completed and we will approve it for you. Okay. I think that's it. Somebody had their hand, nope. Not it's anymore. Gone. Okay, <laughs> we're good. Um, thank you all for joining us. Please uh, reach out if you have any questions and have a good rest of your afternoon. Yes, thank you. And we'll Bye. be getting this deck in the email. We'll be getting this deck by email and the uh, link for the quiz. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Great. Thank you so yes. much. Thank you. Yes, Bye. thank you. Bye.